and she just told me that you're there i'm confident of who you are in terms of your scores 670 is absolutely not the score that you are capable of there is a psychological barrier you need to break through it just stop studying and so i booked my next exam which was 25 days after my last attempt and no those 25 days i did not i be for even half an hour i just stopped studying i was going free minded and that's when i sort of broke that 700 mark hey hi sir hey how are you good 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 <laughs> cool so thank you shark for joining us for the fact the story series uh so before we get started maybe you can give us a quick background about yourself what do you do and what has been your professional journey So I graduated from business economics. I'm born and brought up in Delhi. Graduated from business economics. Uh, did actuarial science for a short stint in my career. Then I joined the finance industry. Worked as a private equity analyst, catering to a PE fund based out of US uh, for about two and a half years. Then I pivoted to strategy, and I've been working over here since the past three years. I mainly look at capacity management, workforce management, performance management, operations. and the uh, the bits right as a strategic associate i worked on a wide array of uh, problem statements and then i solved them and directly reported to the management that's a bit of what i do right now coming to the my gma journey i think it's been uh, two odd years i started my gma journey back in 2021 wherein i thought i have a very strong quant background so i thought what will gma do right it's a piece of uh, it's a cake walk for me but in reality that was not the case i i got a 650 and i was thoroughly disappointed even though i got a q50 in quant verbal has been my major pain point right <laughs> multiple attempts 3 4 4 attempts i used to get 640 650 670 on the d days whereas in my mocks i used to score more than 730 740 760 consecutively so i have a question here so uh, you know when you started this whole thought process the you know you want to do an mba how did you go about with your research also in terms of understanding that how do i prepare for your gmat what was your uh, like you mentioned your first thought was it should not be a big thing but how did you go about preparing what was your initial research involves Then you could tell me. Right. So first, uh, when I when I decided that I am facing a ceiling in my current job and I need to catapult my career to the next level, I need a master's degree. That's when I started talking to my mentors in my family. Right? How should I proceed? And there were two ways that I at that point I got to know, which is CAT and GMAT. Now CAT I feel is not up to my strength because it takes like a year of preparation and then you give your CAT in November. For me, the opportunity cost was always too high because I was constantly working regularly. I had a strenuous routine, so I could not take that much time out. Whereas GMAT sort of was up my alley, right? Because there was only two uh, subjects, English and maths, and I thought that GMAT is accepted by worldwide, so it just opens my plethora of what kind of B schools I can get into. So that's why I opted for GMAT. Now, in terms of uh, how do I prepare for it, I feel like like any other student who has. no knowledge about how should you embark on a journey the one thing that i did was google research on how you should watch other platforms available i understood this manhattan this that xyz things and i feel like uh, the first uh, shot that i gave was jambore and uh, i know i shouldn't say names but it was jambore and i just like got into it just because it was the first one coming up that's it not a lot of research put into it but just then when i got into it i started working 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 that's how i got into the journey Right. So, what was your approach? Was your approach more like you know, typically because of our Indian education system, we are always in this thought process that I have to do a lot of questions, right? What was your approach to the test? Because GMAT is slightly different than other tests. So, what is your? Yes. So, exactly that was my approach. Like I said, my GMAT journey has travelled over a span of two years from approach A to an approach Z. But initially, when I started, exactly that was my approach that. Put in eight hours of effort and you get the result. It was only when I reached like after three attempts or two attempts I realized that's not the case. It's it's not gonna work like that. You need to smart smartly work your days instead of just putting in hard work. Right. So move from your attempts perspective. Right. Every time you know. So your first attempt you mentioned you had a six fifty. What did a change did you do? What was your change from your first attempt to second attempt, or was it more like let me take it again? I think something went wrong on the D day. What was your thought process over there? 
I think the first was a very knee jerk <laughs> reaction wherein you realize that you haven't practiced enough. It's a very naive and a very simple thought that if I'm giving it for the first time, any G mat taker after the exam does not go their way, will the first thought that will come across is maybe I haven't practiced enough. But in reality, that's not the case. I also did the same thing. I thought that maybe let me take another two months, wherein I've already prepared. Coming from preparation of three months, taking another two months was in hindsight a very illogical decision. But I did that instead of looking at my mistakes. I prepared, 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 and at the end of the day, gave another t- other attempt after two months. And the result was same, 640. So you had to at at that point I realized I need to take a step back and realize what's actually going wrong. Was there something you know when you were taking the test? Did you feel some nerves or was there something on during the test that you felt was going right or wrong? I feel like that's a very uh, true what the thing that you're saying. It it happens with everyone, but they do not realize it. It's very subconscious. Right, um, my first time when I gave attempt, I was like after the attempt, I was chill only. Hey, I'm bored. I'm so bad. I was giving my exam, but when I look back, yes, I was stressed. I was thinking that if I do not get this score, I won't get this college. I won't be able to get out of my job, and those thoughts inevitably tend to cloud your judgment and your way of solving your problems. So in reality, whereas you don't accept that, yes, that's happening with you too. You live in denial, but subconsciously it does happen with you. It, especially with a person who's carrying three to four years of experience and wants to completely change their industry, that pressure just get, keeps on increasing. Right, right. More from a, how did you find crack work? How did you get to know about crack? I think, um, like I said, over a span of two years, um, you name a portal or a practice session or a website or a company on uh, Google that uh, gives GMAT consultancy, and I would have gone through it. Let be it. Her target test prep, Jamboree, Manhattan, Princeton. Uh, I can name ten more. When I gave my last attempt before joining Crack Verbal, that was after taking the help of a professional mentor for Verbal, and uh, I was al- always giving so much effort because in my mocks I was very confident. In my mind, I was very frustrated as to why is it not translating on the D day. That is the only reason that which kept me going. That hey, I need to give it another attempt. I'm not worth this. So I took a, a professional mentor for verbal, and again on that D day I got six forty, right? And to be honest, that mentor uh, I won't name or whatever, but that mentor sort of gave up. Said that hey, you've tried enough, you've done everything. If six forty, six forty or six fifty, whatever you're getting, that is your score. Let's carry on with that. And he was very right in his approach also, right? There is always there has to be an end point to something. But again, um, I'm a little egoistic when it comes to academics because I've been a straight A student. So I started researching more, and then that's when I encountered Crack Verbal. And as the name suggests, it talks about verbal, right? As you say, Crack Verbal. So I just thought that maybe it's specifically focusing on the verbal aspect of GMAT. That's when I got in touch with uh, Karthik, and uh, kudos, I'm still in touch with that guy, a stellar, stellar performer, right? I mean, the the from the first day that he spoke to me, he got me hooked to the. Brochure and what all you offer, the mentors that even are very pers- personalized. This thing, and I, I told him on the one day only that hey, I don't want hand hand holding, I don't want spoon feeding. I've done this enough number of times. This is my last attempt. I'm applying in this round of application, no matter what. I just need some professional guidance again to maybe maybe something changes. Let's see, right? So that's when he said that let's let's get you on board and see what can be done. So what do you think changed in your approach in this attempt? I think, and to be honest, I'll tell you what actually changed. And it's very funny, right? I don't know how many people would uh, relate to this, but when I took Crack Bowl as a professional mentor, I worked with the mentor. Uh, I don't know if I should say the name, but I worked with the mentor for a month. And uh, after the month, I was very confident. My mock scores were again 760, 770, reaching ceilings like nothing else. But on the D day, I got a 670 again, right? Even on my final attempt. And I spoke to my mentor after the this thing. And my mentor was very confused, and she was like, "I don't know what's happening with you, but uh, what I want you to do is I want you to book another attempt, and I want you to stop studying." That's what she told me. She told me that you don't need to touch your books from now till the next attempt you give, and just go ahead with whatever you have. Start your application process, but give this another attempt. What changed was that I stopped studying. <laughs> There is a I, I realized looking back in hindsight. That there is a what do you say? There is a marginal utility curve applicable to this also. The more and more you did, it gives you diminishing returns. So you need to put a stop to 
somewhere and maybe take a step back and just chill let go i still now i remember i got a 670 i spoke to the mentor miss monica and i think she helped me a lot in terms of psychologically breaking that barrier and she just told me that you're there i'm confident of who you are in terms of your score 670 is absolutely not the score that you are capable of there is a psychological barrier you need to break through it just stop studying and so i booked my next exam which was 25 days after my last attempt and no those 25 days i did not i did for it was half an hour i just stopped studying i was going free minded and that's when i sort of broke that 700 mark so do you think when you were taking the test this time and with a more calmer method to uh, attempting the test do you think that actually changed i mean that is definitely one big reason which we can see might have changed but uh, do you think you felt that change even during the test when you were taking the test yeah i was going in absolutely free i was going in that hey i made my peace with 670 i'm going ahead with the application process with a 670 this is just another attempt anyway i haven't studied in the last 25 days i don't know what i'm going to do let's let give it another mock test and when i saw the score i started laughing i was like what is this i don't know how this happened so i feel like in my journey i feel like yes preparation does play a part but preparation is only 50% of the game gmat actually is psychological and it tests you when you, it hurts you when you are absolutely at your lowest right when you've solved 10 questions down and bottom you are mentally exhausted that's when the real challenge begins and it's not to do with preparation it's not to do with how much someone's aptitude it's actually got to do with how much pressure that person can take in those 3 hours of rigorous mental problem solving perfect perfect so now that you're done and dusted you're focusing on your applications if you have to tell top 3 words of wisdom to anyone who's preparing right now or is in the same journey as you were what would you tell them i think uh, the first thing that i would tell them is smart work solving more questions is not going to lead you to it but analyzing your mistakes is going to lead you to it that is number 1 the second is going to be it's not the end of the world Uh, it's really not the end of the world and you need to believe that it's not the end of the world only then you can push through and the third thing is that it's at some points in time whatever score you get you need to make peace with it and move on because gmat is not your end goal your end goal is the b school that you're targeting you never know what converts you never know how you sell your story be very confident of who you are as a person and just accept your score and move on it's not the end of the world perfect perfect Thank you so much, Ishan. I think this was an amazing discussion, <laughs> and uh, I think it, it is it is something that everybody goes through, right? Especially as a GMAT test taker, this is something. But I think what you went through and what you overcame is, uh, I think, the entire story and the entire journey. All the best Thank for your rest of the applications, and I'm sure you'll do well. And I hope this new year brings in some something great for you. So uh, you let's hope for that. <laughs> Thank you Ishan thank you so much for giving me time thank you take care no bye bye